Our Lord's first New Testament sermon was a, a sermon on hell. Jesus is a hellfire preacher. I hear people say, well, I don't want to talk about hell. That's very negative. Jesus was a hellfire preacher. Matthew 5, his first sermon as laid out in the New Testament. Verse 22 of chapter 5 of Matthew, I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be guilty before the court, and whoever says to his brother, you good for nothing, shall be guilty before the Supreme Court, and whoever says, you fool, shall be guilty enough to go into the fiery hell. Here is Jesus arriving in Jerusalem and beginning his, uh, the first part of his ministry, then going up to Galilee and finishing off his ministry, and wherever he went, he was a preacher of hell. The Sermon on the Mount happens to be given on a hillside in Galilee. He speaks of the fiery hell as if he assumed that everybody knew about it. He doesn't have to give them a definition or a description. It was very well known part of their biblical understanding. Same sermon, verse 29, if your right eye makes you stumble, tear it out and throw it from you, it's better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. Verse 30, if your right hand makes you stumble, cut it off, throw it from you. Better to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. In the 10th chapter of uh, the book of Matthew, that very familiar verse, uh, which is often quoted, and we'll come back to it in a little bit, Matthew 10, 28, where we read this, Do not fear those who kill the body but are unable to kill the soul, our Lord says, but fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. In chapter 11, he talks about hell. Of Matthew chapter 18, he talks about hell. He talks about hell in uh, chapter 23 several times. He says that the Pharisees are, guilt, are guilty of producing sons of hell, and they are sons of hell themselves. Yes, Jesus was a hellfire preacher. When we talk about salvation, the word has to be used. The word has to be used because we're talking about rescue. Salvation is a word that means deliverance or rescue, and the question is, from what? Contemporary uh, kind of corrupted Christianity would offer many psychological and even material um, substitutes for hell. Uh, we, we would say, well, uh, Jesus wants to save you from loneliness, or he wants to save you from purposelessness, or he wants to save you from anxiety, or he wants to save you from poverty, or he wants to save you from um, failure, or he wants to save you from sickness, or he wants to save you from dis disappointment. No, no he, he desires to save you from hell, from the fiery hell, the lake of fire that is eternal. The message of Scripture is that salvation is a rescue, a rescue from a real place called hell. Jesus spoke more about hell than anybody else in the Bible. In fact, he spoke more about hell than everybody else in the Bible combined. And he defined it as conscious, eternal punishment. Conscious, eternal punishment. Our Lord Jesus believed in eternal hell. We'll talk about some of the things that he said about it in a little bit. He continually spoke about hell, and he warned sinners to escape hell because of its horrible reality. Turn to Luke 16 for a moment. And in Luke 16, you have Jesus actually telling a story about a man who went to hell. You will remember this. There was a rich man, Luke 16, 19. He habitually dressed in purple and fine linen, joyously living in splendor every day. And there was a poor man named Lazarus who was laid at his gate, covered with sores, and longing to be fed with the crumbs which were falling from the rich man's table. Besides, even the dogs were coming and licking his sores. Now the poor man died and was carried away by the angels to Abraham's bosom. That's a kind of an Old Testament reference to a place of comfort, a place of peace where Abraham is. And Abraham, of course, was a true believer as the father of faith who received righteousness because he believed. So this would be heaven. 
And there went the poor man. The rich man, on the other hand, died and was buried in Hades, which of course here refers to hell because of the way it's described. He lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and saw Abraham far away and Lazarus in his bosom. This is a parable, and there are some names the Lord uses. He doesn't usually use names in parables, but on this occasion he did. He used the name of Lazarus and Abraham. And this rich man, who is shocked that he has ended up in hell, cried out and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus so that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool off my tongue, for I am in agony in this flame. So now Jesus tells us this is a place that you go to after death. This is a place of torment. This is a place of thirst. This is a place of agony. This is a place of fire. All of that is in what we just read. Abraham said, Child, remember that during your life you received your good things, and likewise Lazarus bad things. Now he's being comforted here, and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you, there is a great chasm fixed. so that those who wish to come over from here to you will not be able, and none may cross over from there to us. Once you're there, you're there forever. No escape. This is our Lord's story describing hell. Was the Son of God wrong about that? Are the deniers of hell correct? And there are many, many of them. 